Kevin, listeners, this is our biggest elite take we've ever done. Uh, this run sheet took about 45 minutes to put together. Uh, there's a million different things to cover. Uh, we do the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Awards last week, so we don't really discuss any of the current affairs and the current happenings in wrestling, pal. So it's really been two weeks since we really discussed and sunk our teeth into the, the, the news and happenings. And wow, uh, there's a few things to go over. There's some pretty notable things. You got the, we'll get to all of it, but The Rock's cutting 15-minute unfiltered social media promos, which just destroy basically any of the full-time talents we have, mainly Rollins. You've got all this, these things, Sting's retirement, AW, the Young Bucks, pal, we'll get to that. There's LA Knight content, there's Logan Paul and Prime, Cody, Roman, Paul of X Pacemaker. Kevin, how you doing, pal? I'm great, pal. Pal, look, I'm 90 days sober, pal. I got the Gatorade, got the water, pal. Hey. Got the, maybe we can get a sponsor, pal. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, they, this this episode is going to be so long that it might be broken into two parts. We'll see. <laughs> You might be listening to the first part right now on Monday. You get the second part on Thursday. Who knows what's going to happen? We might get crazy, pal. Yeah. Um, I- I'm ready to kick it off, though. Are you ready, yeah. pal? I got, a, I got a hot question for you right right off the stove, pal. <laughs> yeah. So what, what are your honest thoughts and opinions on this Cody and Rollins versus Rock and Roman Reigns storyline? <laughs> I love you just have a, have a chip as you ask that. Okay, um, Cody, Rollins, Rock, Roman. It's the biggest tag team match ever, pal, happening on night one. Then you're going to have Cody versus Roman with a million interferences and overbooking on night two, as we'll discuss shortly. My overall opinions. I personally like that The Rock is back. Yes, obviously, because we're all smart asses. We all know why he's back. One, he's now on the board, pal. He's a stakeholder. They're trying to use him to distract some attention from what's going to happen with Vince McMahon. Yes, The Rock's movies have failed in the last few years. Yes, he's, you know, there's all that stuff. But seeing The Rock come out, for instance, on SmackDown, when he comes out of that sick entrance, it's like, oh, my God. Like, it's The Rock. They've got that lightning effect thing happening. He's doing the, like, the, you know, the, the Hollywood sort of shirts, and he's doing, like, the throwback shirts, and he's doing that goosebumps thing where he zooms into the camera and like this and all that other business. The Rock's doing his act. I like The Rock's back for this. Uh, but then there's the logistics of what they're actually doing, which I want to discuss, Kevin. This is like the main issue I take with this, is that it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, I understand Rock and Roman, obviously, they're the Samoans. It's their bloodline, their family. That makes sense. Like that, that is, like, you watch that, that's cool. Seth Rollins and Cody are just best friends, I guess. And, like, the main, the main thing we've been told is Rollins is like, look, you know, I'm being friends with you because Roman bad. Like, I'm friends with you because the bloodline, if Roman wins this match at WrestleMania, it's over for WWE. And they make it seem like, you know, they're making Roman retaining the title at WrestleMania 40 seem as bad, like, on screen as these, like, Vince McMahon lawsuits. It's like, oh, my God, this is the end game. If if we can't do this, it's over. Like, it, it's the end. You know, it's like, I find that funny. But, yeah, my overall opinion on this the segments, they're entertaining. I'm, I'm entertained watching it. So that's obviously the main thing in all this. Like, because Kevin, as we've discussed, this show is all about me, what I want, whether I'm entertained, whether I'm into it. It doesn't matter what anyone else is about what I want, pal, because I'm a wrestling fan. It's all about me. Uh, but that being said, th- th- there's plot holes throughout this. There's a, that night one match. I, I guess it's the biggest tag team match in history. I get it. Cool. Does Seth Rollins need to be wrestling twice oh, on both yeah. nights? Does well, sorry, once per night, but twice for the whole weekend? Does Roman Reigns need to wrestle twice? No. Does Cody need to wrestle twice? Nope. I mean, no. Does The Rock it, need it, to wrestle at all? No. No. Go ahead, pal. What do you think? I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to jump in front of you, pal. Finish up. I was just going to say, yeah, no, like... It's one of these sort of ones. Come the night, I'm sure, WrestleMania 40, night one. We're, we're during this match... You're going to have The Rock, he's, you know, he tags himself in, he's trash talk, and he hits these couple of moves, there's a bit of interference, like, I'm sure we'll all be like, hey, and it'll be great for the live crowd at WrestleMania, but I just, I, I'm still not sold yet, you, you know, you had The Rock calling Cody a mistake, uh, you know, on SmackDown, and then Cody slapped him, and then The Rock did like the, like, 
I've just been slapped acting. And then five seconds later, Fox just cut the feed. So it was like, okay. So that seemed abrupt and like it wasn't planned because they went over time because the entrances went for like 20 minutes. But they, I don't uh, know, they, Kevin, they, 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 there was clips. Somebody, somebody that was there at the event posted a clip of like the producers telling Rock, hey, come on, finish up your promo. Come on, we got to get off the air. Yeah. Like Fox hates us already. You know, we're leaving them. Like we can't keep doing this to them. So, yeah, the, the, the Rock, once again, political chesses, goes into business for himself. He makes the promo, the TV allocation <laughs> they had, all about him. Classic Dwayne. Anyway, Kevin, I'll flip this question back to you. We haven't really heard, last time you really spoke on this, you said when The Rock did one of his heel promos a couple of weeks back, I'm not into it. I'm not feeling it. That was your, like, the last time we heard you discuss this. Have you changed on no. this? Like, are you now more into this storyline? you like, yeah. You wake up every morning thinking, yes, Cody Rhodes, his dog Pharaoh, Brandy, Seth Rollins, looking like a cross-dressing Kanye West wannabe, The Rock, Roman. I can't wait, or are you just still like, eh? I'm still eh. Uh, I'm still eh overall. I, I was captivated by the segment last week. I thought that was a good segment. If we were doing a Roman versus Rock feud, yep. and it was like not for the championship, and it was like, the way that we all wanted to go down, it was just Roman versus Rock for the tribal chief position. That was a great segment. Mm -hmm. When you put that segment in and you're building towards a tag team match for, that between Cody and Rollins for no reason, that segment doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I like, yeah, captivating segment, cinema. I'm talking about the one from last week with you know the Rock doing the thumb and you know Roman's uh, stopping Rock from doing the if you smell and telling him to acknowledge him. Great segment. Again, when it's building towards a tag team match, eh. If you're building towards Rock vs. Roman, okay, Roman wins. He's the high chief. He's second to Rock's mom in the family. Cool. Okay, great segment. Um, overall, I I'm just not into this, bro. I'm just, I'm, I'm just not into it. Like, I, I feel like I'm, like, I feel like I'm watching AEW in 2021, where like I was just saying, like, I feel like I'm watching a different product than everybody else. Like, everybody else loves this. I, I just feel like I'm watching something different. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I feel so disconnected. Cody wins the Royal Rumble. I was there sitting there in person, like I said. Maybe I'm just more connected to that. But it just mm -hmm. doesn't sit right with me. It'll never sit right with me that Cody wins the Rumble and then on Friday, four days after, gives his opportunity away to The Rock. And then, like, Rock slaps Cody and now everybody's cool now. Like, everybody's just okay with that. I don't know. That whole, that whole thing is just doesn't make... Like you said, the storyline doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. The only sense that I can make of it, and I, I heard somebody say this in a podcast or YouTube review or read in an article, I don't remember what it was, but yeah. somebody was saying that Rollins might be in Roman's pocket, and we could get a Rollins heel turn and Rollins join the bloodline. If, you know, we'll say this for our prediction show, if Roman does win the title, that could be the outcome that we get. We could get Rollins being like, a, like an inside agent this whole time. I, I guess we should move on now to the next question, and, I, and I'll kind of talk about this. Is Seth Rollins in danger of ruining his legacy? I, I, think, I, I think if this plays out in a way where Rollins, he's been clowned for now three months, roughly. It's March. He's mm -hmm. been getting clowned since January yeah. by Roman, by Rock, Paul Heyman. Cody's even been clowning him. Cody's like, bro, I beat you three times, bro. <laughs> Like, I don't want your championship. And then Rollins is out there begging Cody to pick him to wrestle him at WrestleMania. If this plays out where Rollins takes the pinfall in the tag team match, so that way we can have bloodline rules match for Cody and Roman, and then Rollins just loses his championship clean to McIntyre at night too, well, what does that do for Rollins' legacy in the long term? Like, that, like that's what he's going to be remembered for in the end. His biggest WrestleMania moment will be tied to him losing both nights. Losing his championship, costing uh, Cody, like, a fair match. So if he yeah. doesn't, like, if, if they don't do something big with him, he's going to be in the gutter, pal. Like, you think about it. Like, I, I don't know if the heel turn is the answer. Having him join the bloodline, I don't know if that's the answer. I do think that would be a, a way to freshen up this storyline. Lord knows the bloodline is as stale as it can get. The Rock is not making it any fresher for me. It, mm. it, it, like I said, if it was Rock and Roman fighting for to be underneath Rock's mom on, on the family tree, then yeah, great storyline. Whatever. But this garbage, whatever we're getting on, on a week-to-week -week mm. basis, 
I'm sorry, rock cutting good promos and saying good one liners is not enough to make this interesting mm. for me. What to unpack there? I, I'll, I'll start on the Rollins point. Seth Rollins and the whole thing with this, how, as you just perfectly said, he's been clowned nonstop for months. The Rock, particularly, is just unrelenting with this Rollins. I mean, it, it's essentially a verbal burial. Like, like, this is the sort of stuff where, like, someone who's a very casual wrestling fan, they obviously know Rock because everyone knows Rock. You know, they, they, they know of Rollins because maybe they follow WWE, but they're not, like, super, like, oh, my God, I'm a Rollins guy, like most of us. They're watching this going, yeah, like, like Rock's just cooking him. Like, this is great. Like, Rollins sucks. Like, Rollins is a clown. You know, he's a walking clown emoji piece of, you know, what? Like, that literally, like, last night, I mean, and Rock's done this in all his promos in the last, like, month. Where he's like, oh, you're a clown emoji, you're a walking clown emoji, yada yada. That that's gonna stick with Rollins the rest of his career. Like but that's just I, I can't unsee that with Seth Rollins. And as he's standing in the ring last night, as they're doing that segment on SmackDown, you've got The Rock, Roman Reigns, Cody, and then Rollins. It's very it's so obvious when they're saying that, okay, well, Rollins just shouldn't be here. Roll, Rollins is not like the other three. It's it's like it's like among us power. One of them's not like the other, one's the imposter. Like Rollins is just there. Dressed as, like, when he came out with that ridiculous, like, all black attire, the big puffy jacket thing on, like, the, the turtleneck shirt with the big sunglasses. I'm like, I can picture this when Kanye West is going through a bipolar episode. This is what he dressed like. Like, that's what he's wearing. And then, finally, pal, he stood up to the rock, pal, after Rollins' pathetic promo on Raw. Can we just touch on this, how bad that promo was? Like, Kevin, I get it. Maybe Brian Gurowitz wrote that or some writer wrote that. Whatever the material is, it's on you as the talent, as the guy who's getting paid $4 million or whatever Rollins is on every year. You need to deliver that material and make it good. Make it at least half convincing. Him standing, staring at the barrel of the camera going, Diary Dwayne, get out of the main event. Just take the championship and get out of the main event of night one. You don't deserve to be there. I, like, I get it. This is like the current, the, the current day pal, Mr. WrestleMania guy. He produces a great match at every WrestleMania. He's the ultimate, consistent, reliable performer, Kevin. I get it. That's Seth Rollins. You know, you can put him against anyone. Match will be good, pretty good. He's reliable. He's trustworthy. But he's out of his league. That, that's the reality of what's happening right now. He is in there with, like, the big boys. He's in there in, like, the absolute deep end. He's in there, and the pool is 50 feet deep. Rollins can swim when it's 25 feet deep, 30 feet deep. He's in there with Rock, who's doing, like, uncensored, unscripted, like, Facebook and Twitter promos going off. Roman uh, is not his Roman's apex anymore. It's not 2021, but this is still, like, you know, tribal chief Roman, who everyone's going to make videos, Superkick Studios, Wrestling Gifts, Wrestling's Premier, every YouTuber, Wrestling Bios. They're going to make their three-hour-long full bloodline documentaries in about a year or two saying that this Roman Reigns was a legendary yeah, I'll character. be making a video of the, of the DUIs and how that affected the the uh, the family, pal. Love that. And then you have Cody, who's like the face of the company, who is like the hottest wrestler in the company right now, has been the last year and a half. And then you got Rollins, who's his big moment, pal, in this last month was last night on SmackDown. He stood up to Dwayne. So in the middle of The Rock doing his 45-minute promo that the Fox executive was like, come on, Let's hurry this up. Come on. Come on, Dwayne. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the middle of that, Rollins goes, shut up, Dwayne. You're in a midlife crisis. Like, Seth, the dude lives in a house, that, like a mansion that costs like $30 million with his like children. He's getting paid millions, like 500 million Instagram followers. Yeah, okay. Dwayne's last couple movies weren't great. It's just like, well, come on, Really? You know, and like Rollins is just, I don't know, like Rollins and all of this, this hurts him in my opinion. Yeah. If Rollins is just facing Drew McIntyre in a heated personal storyline, Drew McIntyre was just calling out Rollins. Rollins was like, I've beaten you already, Drew. And it was like, it was like just them two going out on Raw. That's perfect. Oh, like that, wow. that, that, that fits. The, the shoot interviews, and this is this is popped in my head. The shoot interviews yeah. from this time frame are going to be incredible in 15 years. When you've got like Ricochet talking about like Seth Rollins getting buried in like in creative meetings, Rollins like I want to do this, and The Rock's like No, shut up, bitch. Like, like you can tell Rollins don't want to be there. You can tell, like you, you could feel it, like the diarrhea Dwayne thing. Like you could tell he don't want to be there, bro. You could tell mm -hmm. he doesn't, he has no interest in being in this tag team match. 
like he's being i don't want to say he's being forced to but they're like hey look we need you to do this bro like we don't have another yeah. star as big as you that we could stick here yeah and he, like i mean would you be comfortable just being like the butt of the joke every single week when you're like hey i'm seth rollins i'm the world champion i'm the guy yeah. that's here week in and week out making shows that neither one of you samoans are making i don't know like i i mean yeah go yeah. ahead go ahead the, the whole thing is a bit like cooked all around like that yeah you know, there's problems all over it i mean we just touched on like the logical side of it before it, as you said it's clear rollins is hardly like and when you say it like that is kobe lopez the performer behind seth rollins getting home from work every day going i love yes i'm, I'm in the main event of night one here cool the whole storyline is that i'm a bitch and that no one respects me like the whole storyline is he is a joke He's, he's a literal He's got to be looking at it like, hey, this this WrestleMania check is going to pay my daughter's 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 tuition. Like, that's all That's all it is at this point, I think. It's bad that Seth Rollins has to have the perspective on this. Like, Kobe Lopez, the person, has to approach this like an OnlyFans model approaches their career. No one respects me. No one, no one's inspired by this. Everyone's, everyone thinks I'm a joke. Everyone thinks I'm a clown. No one respects me. I'm getting mocked every day. I'm getting trashed on social media. Oh, but it pays well, pal. Oh, look at me. It's a joke. Oh, that That is a TikTok clip if I've ever seen one right there, pal. Seth Rollins is the OnlyFans model equivalent to WWE Superstar, pal. That, that's all he is. And he's got that the, the, the pretty looking like the gold world championship belt, which I, I was at the press conference at the Elimination Chamber being 20 feet away from that championship. It looks like a great belt. Cool. But like, and... Like, you think Dwayne The Rock Johnson cares? You think Joseph Roman Reigns Amawai cares? You think Cody Rhodes cares as he's on his tour bus getting, like, $10 million a year with monstrous reactions as the face of the company? Rollins is such an afterthought. It, Rollins, Seth Rollins is the only fans champion equivalent in WWE right now. That's all he is. There's no respect there. He get, he's getting paid well, pal. He's in a good spot, I guess, you know, but... There's no dignity. There's no pride there. No one takes him seriously. Like, what is his comeuppance in this whole storyline? What, he, he gets to face The Rock in Saudi Arabia? And he beats The Rock after, like, 17 curb stomps? Like, that, that's his comeuppance? You know, like, he's just, he's being destroyed. But I digress, pal. Um, yeah. The next question here. Yeah. And we kind of we kind of danced around this a little bit already, so... Is The Rock's involvement in this year's WrestleMania really necessary? I'm going to say yes, because WWE, as we allude to, have been just destroyed with CM Punk in the tricep, Brock Lesnar in the urinating. You've got all these, you know, all these situations happening. Cena's not around at the moment. He might show up at WrestleMania night power, make an appearance, but... Well, these big names, like you need something, right? That's my view. The way they're doing, as we just as we touch on, it would be so much better if this was just Rock and Roman segments, or like like one or the other, or if you had I don't know, like you're building Cody versus Roman on Raw, and then SmackDown you're building Rock versus Roman, and you were doing one on each night. Even that, people would complain still. I get it, but that would make more sense than this. This is a tag match that doesn't need to happen. Where the stipulation is weird, um, bloodline rules. If the Rock and Roman win, if Cody wins and Rollins win, it's just like you know, Rock's going, yeah, you get to finish your story. I'll allow that. <laughs> but if you lose, we're gonna have Paul Heyman on commentary, and our fan of why is gonna be an enforcer. Like, what does that even mean? It, it, like, it's all a big joke. You know, it's just one of these things. You'll never get another championship shot if you don't beat myself and Roman on night one. Who's taking the pin in this match? Like, it's all Rollins. a big match. So it's going to be Bloodline Rules Night 2 then, you reckon? Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll touch on that. We'll touch on yeah, that. Okay. So, but yeah, so, yeah. The question, is the Rock's involvement really necessary? I mean, I... No. Yeah, yes. No. I, yes. Uh. No. <laughs> they, they did WrestleMania 39. They did Record Gates in LA. And they didn't have... They didn't have Punk. They didn't have... Uh, uh, what, 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 who's the other guy you said? They have they, oh, they had Bro Brock. Brock they had Brock, Brock. Was second on the show against Omos. Yeah, so they, basically not there. they had Brock and Cena involved in in underwhelming matches. Cena jobbed Austin Theory, the biggest joke of all time. 
Um, I don't know if you did. You see Wrestling Gifts video about John Cena's underwhelming WrestleMania? I group? did. I did. I, it he put it long. in perspective. I didn't even think about it the way yeah. the way it was like until he presented it that way. I was like, wow, Cena's WrestleMania career. Um, yeah, not that great. So mm-hmm. the Rock's involvement, I don't think it's necessary. Like WWE, even with the Vince McMahon shadow that we're gonna talk about and mm. all that stuff, Brock Lesnar, Punk, WWE could still sell back to back nights on the back of like Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch main eventing night one and Rollins and McIntyre and Roman and Cody being like the big draws on night two. I don't think I don't think we really need to be seeing what we're seeing here. It, it's it serves no purpose. Yeah, like I said, it's great mm. to have Rock out here giving good one-liners, cutting good promos, but it serves no greater purpose, in my opinion. Yeah, and I mean, I say yes, sort of, not because of the reason you say of, like, them needing to sell out a building or, like, you know, they're struggling to sell WrestleMania tickets or people aren't going to be interested. We need the right. It's not like it's, it's not 2018. I'm not answering it in that regard. Just from the, the week-to-week TV point of view, it's like, yeah, cool. Nice having Rock coming out, but... That, that's that's the only reason I answer that. Um, and that being said, pal, I mean, we touched on The Rock's burial of Seth Rollins. We can move on. We can move on to the next point. Kevin, you've got this question in here. Um, do you want to a- ask this? Because I don't know how you want to tone yeah. this. I don't want to just ask it. And it's like, WTF? What the hell, Jimmy? When there wasn't my, this wasn't my question idea. You want to ask this? All right. So the question I had is, will The Rock ruin Drew McIntyre's momentum next? And that, that's a little bit tongue in cheek, but you know, Matt McIntyre is a rising star, bigger than he was in 2019 and 2020. At this stage in the game, he's the hottest heel in the company. Will, will Rock look at that and just be like, "Hey, look, I want that guy next, bro." And then we're gonna get like a mixed tag match going into SummerSlam or something. We'll have Rock, and, <laughs> we'll have Rock and like Becky Lynch or whatever. <laughs> you know, Rock's gonna take Seth's girl next. We'll have Rock and Becky Lynch versus McIntyre and Rhea Ripley. But like, in SummerSlam, and and Rock would be calling McIntyre an asshole for like seven weeks straight, and just r- ruining McIntyre's credibility with casual fans the way he's doing to Seth Rollins. Like, <laughs> I'm just worried that McIntyre's gotten too big, bro. This is more of a, a compliment on McIntyre. McIntyre's getting so big that Rock's gonna take notice of it and be like, "I need to get my paws on him next." Oh, I said like the worst visualization as you said that. Remember the, like the the Rusev Lana Lashley storyline. Oh my god, yeah, man. <laughs> you got, got like Rock and Becky Lynch like in the massage parlor. And Seth Rollins is just there watching like sad, like Yeah, he's watching sad and like Rock's cutting like some sh- diss promo on like Drew McIntyre as he's like he's in he's in he's in bed with Rollins' wife. Like, can you imagine this rubbish? Like that would be so awful. Can you imagine that in the build of Crown Jewel? The Rock just like takes Becky Lynch as like <laughs> like they, 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 they literally do like a cuck segment. And Seth Rollins is just dressed up as like Kanye West. He's just like with his sunglasses <laughs> on, you know. And the Rock's like, oh, "You're you're you're a clown emoji walking bitch," you know. Like, oh my god, yeah, but yeah. Like so- as you say, like, like what's the end game for like that? Like, like is Seth Rollins gonna get his comeuppance in a great match at Saudi? <laughs> like, like, what's the point? Anyway, that being said, um, I want to touch on this. I mean, we've addressed this for ages, but it feels very relevant now. Roman Reigns is standing in the ring in these segments as like a total afterthought. Like, yeah, Seth Rollins is obviously involved. So Rollins is even more of an afterthought and getting clowned more. But Roman Reigns is just there. This is the guy, Kevin, three years ago, without him, WWE is done. Like, WWE can't run a show without him. You've got Braun Strowman as the Universal Champion. You've got Jey Uso hosting karaoke. You've got Lacey Evans running around with Baron Corbin. That's WWE. Monday Night Raw was unwatchable, insufferable. Roman Reigns comes in, saves the WWE. We've made both of us tons of videos about it. Roman Reigns carrying WWE on his back for like the whole guts of like a year and a half. Without him, we'll, we'll be watching Edge, Adam Copeland running around, winning world championships every week in 2021. Daniel Bryan, pal. Instead, Roman, yeah, Roman Reigns' point is three years ago, he was saving WWE. Now he's in the ring. You're watching The Rock. Oh, look, The Rock's shirt, pal. Oh, The Rock said Phoenix, Arizona love crack. Oh, look, The Rock's saying that he has a 22-inch, pal. Cool. You know, so, like, that's what's happening now. And then Cody's there, and everyone's screaming, whoa, and everyone's like, oh, my God, Cody, Cody. He's the face of WWE, Cody. And then Roman's there. You know, Michael Cole's screaming whatever day number they're at. 1,286. Oh. It's like, great. Like, 
Michael Cole could say 4,120. I'm not any more impressed. I don't care. Like after 945, I stopped caring. After the WrestleMania 39, night two, political chess, screw job of last year, I've stopped caring. And I've made that abundantly clear for me. And it's all that, because as we discussed, Kevin, it's all about me and what I want. I'm a wrestling fan. It's all about me. So after that, Kevin, we're now a year removed, literally. We're like 11 and a bit months since then. Roman's still champion. Roman's now like the third, maybe fourth fiddle in this whole situation. The Rock's grandmother is like more relevant than Roman Reigns now, pal. Because the, because the Rock's grandmother birthed the high chief. The, the whole thing's, I don't know. So Roman Reigns out there, four years into his title run. He's just there, pal. He needs to drop the title. He will drop the title. If he doesn't, it's over. Like, it's just like the, it's just like the lawsuits of Vince McMahon. If Roman Reigns doesn't drop this title, it's over. Oh my God. Jeez. Okay, so I don't even know where to begin. I, I, I don't, I'm just going to make a point because I've been wanting to make this point for like 30 minutes now. Uh, and this feels like the best time to do it since we're talking about Roman holding the title too long. So we're at this point now with WrestleMania 40, right? Where this is like, how do I say this? This is like a, a mixed bag of chaos from a wrestling fan standpoint that we've really never seen before. And I say that because you've got the main event is being built around four guys, Roman, Rock, Seth Rollins, and Cody. <clears throat> the Rock has his fan base, right? The Rock has the casuals and the people that know him from Tooth Fairy and all the movies he's done that are like, oh, this is cool. I'm, I'm, I'm only interested in what The Rock is doing. Mm -hmm. Then he has people like you and me that are like, eh, whatever. The Rock's here. Like, if I want to watch Rock segments, I'll go back to 99 and watch his stuff on YouTube when he was in his prime. And then you've got the Roman Reigns fanboys. The Bloodline fanboys, like, they have their own crazy diehard fan base that's like, yeah, Roman should have beat Cody last year. Roman should win the title this year. Roman should beat Hogan's reign. Like, there's there's a ton of people that, that want to see that. There's a ton of people that want to see Roman walk out with the title. Yep. And then you got a ton of people that are, like, big Seth Rollins guys that are like, what is this? Like, what is he doing? Like, he, he, he should be focused on his match with McIntyre. Like, this is goofy. I'm just not into this because I love Rollins and Rollins is being treated poorly. Then you've got the Cody fans. And, and, I, and I think what, what The Rock has done most is The Rock has shown that the Cody craze was a little bit overblown. In a way, like, it wasn't as big as maybe we thought it was, the Cody movement. Because now The Rock's here, and everybody's talking about The Rock. Like, he's just stolen all the, the spotlight. I, I don't think, because of The Rock's involvement, I don't think there would be a huge uproar if Cody were to lose at WrestleMania 40 night two. Like, yeah, there would be an uproar for sure. But it would be significantly smaller, I think, than what it Man, was. I'd stop, doing a light, I'd stop doing a light hate if Cody didn't win night two, because what's the point then? Like, it wouldn't be an uproar. Uh, I'd, stop doing, I'd stop doing our show. Uh, I'm sure you would, pal. You I, say I that just now. Like, Kevin, Kevin, we can just we can do a late hate every week. That's great. Roman's going to hold the title till I'm an old man with six grandkids. So what's the point? You know, so... Wait, wait, hold I, on, hold I, on. Let, 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 let me finish this point. So... Yeah. The uproar, yeah, like yourself, and there's a lot of Cody fans that'd be mad. But I, I don't think now because of The Rock's movement, or because of The Rock's return, I don't think it has like that yes movement effect that it had maybe a few weeks ago. I think I just think it's cooled down a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think we've hit a point here where I don't think people, like, overall, the general wrestling fan base is really indifferent on what happens. Like, at this point, I think people are just like, I don't care who wins. Like, it's been, it's been so chaotic, so overbooked, so messy, so nonsensical from a storyline standpoint that, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, like, another cousin came out, if Jacob Fatu came out and just beat up Cody and Roman won. Like, and then they use that as a, like, like, say Cody and Rollins win. I know we're getting into predictions here, but yeah, say Cody and Rollins win, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say Cody and Rollins win the tag match and we get the no bloodline interference, whatever. Then mm -hmm. they could, an easy out is just have Jacob Fatu jump out in a hoodie and beat up Cody and Roman wins. And then they're like, oh, he's not part of the bloodline technically, bro. Like, it just, it, nothing would surprise me at this point. Yeah. Like, it, it, they, I, we could see anything happen at WrestleMania. We could see Pat McAfee come off the commentary desk and, like, 
distract Cody. I mean, distract Roman and Cody wins. Like no, nothing would surprise yeah. me. And I think they've, they've killed a lot of the intrigue in the main focal point of the story, which was Cody and Roman and Cody yeah. winning. I, I get the point about, yeah, like the general fan base at, th- at this point, because of all the chaos doesn't really care in that sense, but I'd phrase it this way. The, the wrestling general fan doesn't care what they say for the next month. Doesn't care what sort of overbooking we see. We like everyone expects WrestleMania 40 night one and night two is going to be a circus with this Cody Roman Rock Rollins, and we'll get to the other pieces going to come into it. As long as Cody walks out just holding the title, just like just get get that done, like just get that sorted. Because uh, to me, I mean, I said yeah, I, I, as of a year ago, I'm over it. But now it just feels like cool. Rock's back. He's the shiny new toys we're touching on. He's the one who he's cutting the promos. Everyone's like, oh wow, look, Rock. And you know, it's it's less of, you know, when they're looking over here a month ago going, F W E, Cody, 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 F W E. Now people are like, oh look, Rock. Like I, I get what you're saying there. But as long as Cody just wins the title. Um, which as I'll get to now, pal, not to get into fully predictions with this, but can we just touch on Look, night one, I don't know what they're going to do. Who takes the pinfall or how they do it. Probably Rollins should take the pinfall, but like how they do it, night one, whatever, doesn't concern me. Night two, Cody Roman two is what matters here. That is going to be the most overbooked WrestleMania main event, I think, ever. I think that match, with the amount of intermoving pieces, how like, I'm going to get into a prediction here, just going to cut right to it. What I think they're going to do they did something similar towards the end of last year where you had Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, they run in and hit their moves on Roman and then Cody hits the all the moves. So it was like, look, the, the wrestlers have been effed over by Roman Reigns, getting involved and helping try and end the bloodline. They teased that last year. This year, I think they're going to do the same thing, but it's tenfold. You're going to have as many of these wrestlers who Roman Reigns has beaten, they're all going to run down, get involved, hit their moves on Roman, LA Knight will be down there. Paul Levesque will come down. He won't get physical, but I'm sure that it'll be BS. Paul Levesque will run down. Like, he'll, he'll have the headset on. I, I can picture them doing this. You've got, like, the, this drama pal. Referee goes down. Samoans are beating up Cody. The Rock rips the referee's shirt off, puts the referee's shirt on. The Rock's in a count of the four. Michael Cole's screaming, this is a joke. This is a joke. Like, Cole's screaming. Paul Levesque runs out with the headset. He rips the headset off, throws it. And he's like angrily marching down to the ring, pal. You got like Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce rush out. Referees are down there. You're going to have Stone Cold Steve Austin come out, stun The Rock. The Rock's like on the ground. Then, you know, Cody's like, oh my God, oh my God. And you have QT Marshall in the fourth row, pats him on the back, pal. Cena runs out there. You have John Cena out there. You're going to have the ghost of Brian Danielson, pal, will oh, be there because he's an AW. You can't mention him. You're going to have all these wrestlers Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens. Like a million different wrestlers. Rollins will be out there. Jay Uso. There's going to be like 15 people involved in this mess. Eventually, Cody's going to win the title. He's going to finally get the three count after three crossroads because it's going to take all that, pal. It's going to take all of that for Cody to beat Roman. But Jay Uso just needs to hit a frog splash and money in the bank. That's fine. And pin Roman. That's fine. <laughs> Cody needs like every WWE Hall of Fame and interfere. And like a million interferences, Paul Levesque with a pacemaker ripping off the headset and throwing it. That's what Cody needs to beat Roman. And then it's going to be like Cody with the confetti crying. There's going to be all the wrestlers. Austin and Cena will have him on his shoulders. Cody on the belt, he'll be like tears. You know, you'll have Michael Cole screaming. It's like, oh, it's a miracle in Philly. Miracle in Philly. He's ended the bloodline. Cody's ended the bloodline. This is the greatest WrestleMania moment of all time. Like, you'll, you'll have him as though he's Jim Ross at WrestleMania 20 screaming. Like, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be an absolute car wreck. I'm here for it. I can't wait to see Stone Cold Steve Austin come out there and stun The Rock in the referee shirt. And then Austin will rip the referee shirt off The Rock and put it on himself. It's going to be an absolute <laughs> mess. Oh, like, man. This is great. This is great. I love this. Can I Can I give you... I, when, when you're done, I'm going to give you my my outlandish prediction for the other side. So, go ahead. Yeah. And, and yeah, maybe I might be over-exaggerating. Maybe, yeah, maybe Stone Cold won't be there. But you get the gist. There's going to be some... There's going to be so much interference. There's so many pieces in this chaotic story. Everyone's going to look back on this when they do their WrestleMania 40, like, retrospectives and Superkick Studios does his beautifully edited 36-minute video with really cool layouts and fonts and texts. And a thumbnail that everyone wants to click on that gets a million views. 
when he does that, you're going to look back on this and go, oh my God, there was so much chaos in 2024. And there was between Sam Punk's tricep, Brock Lesnar urinating, changes of plans, The Rock inserting himself on the board one day after Cody won the Rumble and Brian Gurowitz and The Rock saying, this doesn't work for me, pal, political chess. It's going to be unbelievable. Um, but the fact of the matter is, pal, let me talk to you. Uh, Cody's going to walk out champion. That's the main prediction. And it's going to be an absolute car wreck. So go ahead. All right, so this is what I, I foresee, pal. Okay. So we're going to get the bloodline rules, pal. Right? We're going to get the bloodline rules match. You're going to have Paul Heyman out there on commentary, like you said. Alpha, Sika, The Rock's mother will be ringside. All, all tons of family me- members. Rikishi will be out there, pal. Um, you know, we'll have the Jimmy Uso will be out there. Jay Uso will be in Cody's corner, pal. Yeah, Jay Uso in Cody's corner. Rollins in Cody's corner. And then, uh, you know, the chaos will ensue. The, the yeah. Rock's going to take off his, uh, whatever, his Enforcer shirt. He's going to start beating people up. You know, you're going to have Rollins with his bad knees getting thrown across the ring, pal. Thrown all over the place. He's bumping for Rock. J- John Cena's going to come out. We're going to have John Cena coming out to stand up to the bloodline. And then Solo Sokoa's going to show him the thumb. That, that took him out in Saudi Arabia, and, and Cena's gonna be like when he saw Bray Wyatt, like like do the the, 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 the walking thing. Cena's gonna be like, oh my god, oh my god, the thumb, the thumb. It, Cena's gonna be terrified of the thumb, pal. And, and Cena's just gonna go walk back to Hollywood. <laughs> he's he's just gonna leave the ring, pal. <laughs> you remember 2014, the build up Bray Wyatt match for WrestleMania. They did that segment like on like Cena was like in the mirror. And then he like he, he looked up and like that white creepy like sheep mask was there. And then he like he looked again, it wasn't there. And Cena's like <laughs> Cena's like crying. He's like he's terrified. It'll be bad. He'll just he'll see Sakoa's son. Sakoa will be like, ah! and Cena's gonna be like, <laughs> like Cena gets like violent PTSD flashbacks, and he just like rushes back to you know Hollywood pal on the movie set of Barbie. Like, exactly, pal. Yeah, we're gonna get Jacob Fatu, Rikishi's third son, the third Uso pal, the fourth Uso. Yeah. Sorry, since Solo's his son too. The, we're gonna get the fourth Uso pal, and, and and like the bloodline's just gonna beat the hell out of Cody and Rollins, and they're gonna be stomping a mud hole yeah. in them, pal. The, Roman's gonna be screaming at at the fans in Philly, like, yeah, that's why the seventy sixers suck. They're never winning a championship. And then he's just gonna stand on top of Cody Rhodes, and and, we, and the Rock will count three, and he'll be like, yeah, I'm the board member, pal. I anoint. Roman Reigns, my cousin, uh, as, as the champion forever, pal. He's the lifetime champion of WWE. Retire the championship. Roman, take that one home. We're getting a new championship, pal. Nobody can beat Roman. Go home. And, pal, and I don't want to say on this, everything we've discussed last, like, 40 minutes, th- this has become a joke. Yeah. The WrestleMania 40 main event situation has become a joke. Mm-hmm. That's what this is. And we're not trying to be like, oh, uh, we're, we're trying to not take it seriously or whatever. There's so much chaos going on behind the scenes. There's so much political chess. There's wrestlers being in spots they shouldn't be in, i.e. Rollins. That now it's going to be this overbooked mess on night one and night two. Who interferes when? Which bloodline member? Which Fijian who knows The Rock's cousin is going to be appearing on night one or appearing on night two? Which performance center plant who isn't even Samoan, but has a Samoan sort of skin color. Who's going to be in a hoodie. Which who, Who's going to be on what night? Who's going to be where? Is Cody's dog going to be in the front row or the second row? In the in the tag match, pal, on night one, you're going to have Roman Reigns. He's going to be on the apron chatting. He's going to be talking to the camera, pal, same as the Night of Champions 2023. Roman will jump down off the apron and walk over to the first row. You'll see Joel Embiid sitting next to Jalen Hurts. And he'll be like, you two can kiss my ass. And like, I'll slap him. <laughs> And then that'll be like a big viral moment. You know, Embiid and Jalen Hurt <laughs> slap Roman Reigns. And, you know, it's like, you, you two can kiss my ass 49 is all the way, bitch. Yeah. And then like yeah. slap Roman Reigns. And that's going viral on ESPN. And, like, that's all this is going to be. Kevin Hart will be there making fun of The Rock. Yeah, Kevin Hart would be like, your movies suck, man. Nobody wants to watch your movies, bro. Black Adam. We're not talking about Black Adam, bro. Like, yeah, Kevin Hart will be in Cody's corner talking smack. Like, he'll do, like, an intro. He'll do Cody's mm. intro. Get like an improv comedy performance, pal. Yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be ridiculous, bro. And, and, and you're gonna have I mean, Kevin Hart's gonna have some at least appearance. He's probably not gonna host WrestleMania. I assume Sam Punk will host WrestleMania. You'll have some appearance from Kevin Hart because it's in Philly. He's obviously gonna be there, and they're probably gonna do some segment backstage. Kevin Hart tries to visit The Rock and like wish him good luck or something, and The Rock like walks out of his locker room and like slaps 
He slaps Kevin Hart, and Kevin Hart falls on the ground, and that'll go viral on TMZ. You'll say that on like on the A Network, pal. You will have like Entertainment Tonight on A, a covering Kevin Hart getting slapped by Dwayne Johnson at WrestleMania Night One, and like this will be the big moment on Twitter. That's all this is. This is just a way so that WWE can get as much chaos, as much of a circus. It's a joke. That's what this is. And it's unfortunate because this should have been, we're going to tie this all back nicely, pal. When you were at the Royal Rumble in St. Petersburg, you watched Cody Rhodes go back to back, win the Rumble. He's going to face Roman Reigns. He's going to beat Roman Reigns. The WWE is going to march on into the era of Cody and the, the Renaissance era as Superkick Studios claimed and all this. Instead, it's now this. And we spent 15 minutes clowning what this is going to look like. And you get Michael Cole climaxing on commentary, trying to do the Daniel Bryan Miracle on Bourbon Street call again, but with Cody. And you're going to have, like some, you're going to have Connor the Crusher in there. Obviously not Connor. I know he's sadly passed away. Someone else. And Cody will be hugging them, crying. You'll have little Brody in there. Cody will be... <laughs> <laughs> with the championship. He'll put the championship on little Brody. Roman Reigns will be a ringside seething. Paul Heyman will be sobbing and walk off. Yeah, uh, I mean, to answer the question originally here, did Roman Reigns hold the title too long? Do you care about the universal title? Yeah, uh, I would say no. And uh, no. I think if that makes sense. I don't think he's held the title too long. I, I do think there legitimately would have been a backlash on Cody if he had won the title last year. That would have just turned into Super Cena 2.0. Um, so I, I, I think it was the best thing for him not to win it. But I also, at the same on the same hand, I don't care about the Universal title. Not because Roman has held it too long, just because of this mess. Like, they, they might as well be fighting for The Rock's honor. Like, the, the winner gets to be The Rock's best friend between Roman and Cody. Because, like, this is all about The Rock. Like, you know, if Cody wins, he gets to take a picture with The Rock at the next movie premiere. Like, I, I don't know. It, it, the championship means nothing with yeah. Roman just sitting there watching Rock Cut promos. Like, I, I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it's just, that, that's what it is. It's, yeah. You know, and the segment on SmackDown, I mean, it's entertaining watching The Rock make his big entrance. I mean, pal, The Rock's cutting promos. Seth Rollins is on crack, pal. And Phoenix, Arizona, love you know, the women in Phoenix. Love his 22-inch Rock mega dong. Okay. Cool. Um, but the fact of the matter is, pal, it's all a bit of a mess. Uh, that's the reality of it. it it's, we're, we're living through chaos, like, as we speak. As we record this, we're going to look back on this, and I'll watch these episodes back in one year, three years, five years, when WWE is in, like, a whole different place. You know, I'll watch back going, my God, it was chaotic in 2024. Like, WrestleMania 40 season, it was a mess. Like, we'll be talking about it, like, you had Seth Rollins getting clowned, you had Roman Reigns, who was still champion. Cody was clearly the guy. The Rock just came back because of politics. Like, this, that's how we'll discuss this. CM Punk had an injury. Brock loves urinating, allegedly. Like, there's all this stuff that's going into it. And it's just going to be... It's Kevin, I'll, I'll ask this before we move on. Obviously, WrestleMania 40 hasn't happened yet. But as of right now, we're, what, three weeks out. We, can, we know all the main matches that are happening at WrestleMania now. Impromptu question I'm going to ask you... In one year, three years, like what's going to be like the legacy of WrestleMania 40? What are we going to remember this time period for? Because um, I, went, I went to the Elimination Chamber, you went to the Royal Rumble. We're, we're, we're vividly living this. We're covering this. What's going to be remembered for? i say, <clears throat> I would say like in five, ten years time, I'd say it's going to be remembered for the Vince McMahon allegations. This time frame is just going to be strictly remembered for that. I, I just don't think there's going to be anything, really, that other people, like, people will remember in the long term. The, the, the booking, and WWE's done it to themselves with the booking of this stuff. Like, it's going to be like, oh, that was the Vince McMahon era where he got ar ar investigated and arrested for sex trafficking. And, oh, WWE, they did this crazy tag team match with The Rock and Cody and Roman Rollins and all that. Like, <clears throat> if this was, like, again, not to, not to beat a dead horse, if this was just Rock versus Roman for the high chief position, then yeah, I, I think it'd be recognized with a, a little, I think it would have a little better legacy. And we don't know what's going to happen, but we kind of do know what's going to happen now since they've announced the matches. But if it was like just Rock Roman, straight up high chief, okay, then yeah, I think it would have a better legacy. Like, oh, this was The Rock's big return match. This is, you know, The Rock and Roman, we finally got it. 
Like, it, it would just, it would have an oomph to it. As of now, this WrestleMania doesn't seem like it's going to have an oomph to it. It just seems like it's going to be like, yeah, that was the WrestleMania. Yeah, Rock was there. Mm. Yeah. This is going to be viewed, and it, it pains me to say this, because Cody's having his moment should be the biggest deal in the world. This is going to be a more, you know, glitzed up, bigger star version of WrestleMania 27 with, like, what happened there. That show was used as a, a placeholder, as a promotional tactic to build the next year. This is existing to get us to Rock versus Roman at 41, or whenever they do it. Right. That's what, that's what this is. This is basically WWE going, okay, Cody's going to get the title onto him because, like, we physically, there's no other option we have at this point because of how we booked this storyline. Get the title on Cody. Rock's going to turn on Roman, either WrestleMania or like the night after or whenever. Cool. Everyone knows what's going to happen. It's all chaotic. I'm the same as you, pal. This WrestleMania, I'm going to view, I'm going to remember, no doubt, because after WrestleMania, there's going to be so much litigation, so much mess from a legalities point of view with Vince and all this. There's going to be so much. Your channel is going to go off even more, Wrestling Uncovered. Oh, yeah. So much is going to come out that. I'm going to look back on this time period. I imagine with the Vince stuff, the same way when I look back on 2007, 2008, 2009, I view that as like that. That's the whole, that's the, that's the Benoit, Linda McMahon Senate. That's like a messy time period. WWE trying to change their image yeah. on screen, took a real backseat to what was happening off screen. And there's a lot of WWE sort of identity crisis stuff going on. Who are we? What are we about? What do we represent? Who are our people we trust to run us? Like, it's going to be a similar thing, I feel, 2024. Hopefully it doesn't bleed in 2025, but God knows what's going to come out in the coming months. So, place to be seen. Yeah, exactly. And even in that time frame, in the middle of the Benoit stuff, we got an all-time great WrestleMania. WrestleMania mm. 24.